Hello and welcome to News Review from BBC Learning English. I'm Neil and joining me today is Catherine. Hello, Catherine. Hello, Neil. Hello, everybody. Yes, today we are joining Harry and Meghan to say welcome to their new daughter, who they have named Lilibet Diana, in recognition of Harry's grandmother and his mother. If you want to test yourself on any of the vocabulary you hear in this programme, there's a quiz on our website at bbclearningenglish.com. Now let's find out some more about the story from this BBC News report. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have announced the birth of their second child. The girl was born on Friday in Santa Barbara, California. She's been named Lilibet Diana after the Queen and Princess Diana, but will be known as Lily. So the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, better known as Harry and Meghan, have welcomed their second child. Now they have a daughter who will be called Lilibet Diana. Now Lilibet is the nickname given to the Queen when she was a child and Diana, of course, is the name of Princess Diana, who was Harry's mother. You have been scanning the world's media for this story, haven't you, Catherine? You've picked out three really useful expressions this time, which can be used to talk about the story. What have you got? Yes, we have a nod to what's in a name and bumped down the line. A nod to what's in a name and bumped down the line. OK, well, let's start with your first headline, please. Yes, we're starting in the United States with CNN. The headline, Foster, Harry and Meghan's new baby's name, a nod to the Queen. A nod to, a reference to. Yes, we've got a three-word expression. The first word is a, second word nod, N-O-D, and the third, the third word is to, T-O. So we get a nod to. Yeah, so Catherine, what is a nod, actually? A nod is a movement, a gesture that you do with your head. So in a lot of cultures, if we want to indicate yes, we nod our head up and down. We um, do. We do, yes. Um, there's other things we can do when we nod. We can reference something. Are there is, if we want to sort of say over there, we could just do that with our head, move our head to the side, indicating a direction. I'm doing it now. So am I. <laughs> so a head movement is a nod. Yeah. Um, and that's the sense we've got here, isn't it? That we are indicating something. Yes. The Queen. An indication is... A, an, so when you do something to indicate, to acknowledge, to recognise something else... We can say it's a nod to. So the choice of name, Lilibet, which was Harry's grandmother's nickname when she was a child, is a kind of recognition of this child's great-grandmother. So the name is a recognition, it's an acknowledgement, it's a nod to the Queen. Yeah, and if we want to turn that into a verb phrase, we can use give. Yes, you can give a nod to, and it means to, to recognise something, to do something which shows you're aware of something else, an acknowledgement. It's often a very positive thing. When we give a nod to something, we acknowledge or recognise or indicate it in a very positive way. Yeah, you may have noticed, Catherine, that occasionally I wear a maple leaf t-shirt. You do wear a t-shirt with it's a red leaf, isn't it? That's right, yeah, and that's because I grew up in Canada and my T-shirt is a nod to my Canadian childhood. I see. That's very interesting. Yes, a nod to your childhood. Now, there is another meaning uh, and another expression which is very similar with a different meaning. Um, to give someone the nod. Yes, if you give someone the nod, you basically say, yes, go ahead, it's your turn, it's your time. So it's a, to give someone the nod is to say, yep, yeah, do it, you can do this now. Yeah, often used uh, in reference to selecting a player in a sports team. Yes, absolutely, yes. If one player is, is unwell and cannot compete, then the manager will give the nod to the substitute player to say, right, it's your turn now. OK, let's get a summary.
If you would like to watch another story about Harry and Meghan, we have one about the time they decided and announced that they were going to stand down from their official royal duties. What do our viewers have to do? You just have to click the link and you can watch the story. Brilliant. OK, let's have a look at our next headline, please. Yes, we're now in the UK with The Guardian. What's in a name? The meanings of Lilibet Diana Mountbatten Windsor. What's in a name? Is what we call something important? Yes, today's expression is a question. What's in a name? Four words. The first word, what's, W-H-A-T apostrophe S. Second word, in, I-N. Third word, a. And the fourth word, name, N-A-M-E, with a question mark. Now, what's in a name? You know your Shakespeare, don't you, Neil? Well, I think if I think everyone in the world knows this particular Shakespeare, it's from Romeo and Juliet. Yes, that's right. Now, Romeo and Juliet, the star-crossed lovers. So Juliet was in love with Romeo, who was from a different family, and their two families were enemies. So Juliet is complaining that he has the wrong name, and she's saying it's only a name. What's in a name? Your name is Montague. It doesn't matter. Why is your name important? She compares Romeo's name or Romeo to a rose. She said, if you take a rose, the flower, and it isn't called a rose, it still smells beautiful. Why is the name important? Yeah, and that's what this is about. It's an expression that we use to sort of debate whether or not something a name is important to something yes now in this newspaper article they're analyzing the name this name is there's four parts to this child's name we've talked about lilibet and diana and we've said the the article is saying why these names are significant and the headline is saying yeah are names significant in this case they probably are now, Catherine, you're really into your mobile phones, aren't you? It's got to be a good one for you. Yes, I do like to buy one that I, a trusted brand, yes. Yeah, whereas for me, you know, I don't really care. I, I could spend a lot of money on something expensive with a really well-known name, but I've got this one here and it does everything I need to do. What's in a name? Come on, what's in a name? Well, quite a lot, I think, but you think differently. You don't care about the name, so that's that's fair enough if you've got what you want. Yeah, but that's an example of how we can use this expression when you're discussing whether or not a brand or a particular name or a label is in fact important or not. OK, let's get a summary. We have a programme we know you're going to love because it's got Rob in it talking about biscuits and how important the names of biscuits are. What do our viewers have to do? Just click the link. OK, let's have a look at our next headline. And we're still in the UK, this time with Sky. Who is bumped down the line of succession by Harry and Meghan's second child? Bumped down the line, lowered in importance or position. Yes, we have another four-word expression. First word is bumped, B-U-M-P-E-D. The second word, down, D-O-W-N. The third word, the, T-H-E. And the final word is line, L-I-N-E. Now, pronunciation-wise, the first word is bumped. But, because the next word starts with a D, down, we lose the t t of the end of bumped, so we get this, Neil. Bump down. Yes, bump down the line. We don't use the d bumped, we just say bump down the line. It's easier to pronounce, but it's still a past tense. Absolutely, yes. So um, the key word here is bump. Um, to bump something is to sort of move it with force. Yes, generally, yes. If I, if, um, if you bump something, you make it change its position by pushing it, by giving it a good kind of knock or a push to get it out of the way, out of so that something else can take its place. 
And that's what this expression is all about. If you're standing in the queue, Neil, for the coffee machine, and I come along beside you and I give you a good push, and I yeah. move you and you're standing backwards and I'm now in your place, you have been bubbed down the line. Yeah, so that's a very literal definition or explanation there. Um, but we can use it in a more figurative sense. Um, and here we're talking about the royal line of succession. Yes, the royal line of succession. Who will become king or queen after our present queen, Queen Elizabeth, dies? Well, there's quite a long list of people. It starts with her son, then it's her son's son, then it's all the children of the son's son, then it's Harry and his children. And after that, there are other people who are now one place further away from becoming king or queen because of this new arrival, because of Lilibet, Lilibet's birth, some other people are further down the line. They've been bumped down the line. Yeah, and you might use this expression, for example, in a professional context. Uh, maybe you're waiting or expecting a promotion and then somebody else comes in who is more qualified and experienced than you you might be bumped down the line in that case. Yes, absolutely. And if you're bumped down the line, it's usually a negative or a disappointing experience. You want to be further ahead in the line. You want to be up the line, but something's happened to make you go down the line. You're further away from the thing that you want. Absolutely. Okay, let's get a summary of that. Time now for a recap of our vocabulary, please, Catherine. Yes, we had a nod to, a reference to. What's in a name is what we call something important. And bumped down the line, lowered in importance or position. If you want to test yourself, there's a quiz on our website, bbclearningenglish.com, and we are all over social media. Thanks for joining us. Take care and see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.